Hi, this is Greg Norman Jr. And Michael Simpkins from Eleven, the world's first NFT nightclub that's making Miami dance deeper into crypto. We are here on the edge of NFT, the podcast you could probably dance to. It's so great. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Edge of NFT podcast with your hosts, Jeff Kelly, Ethan Janney, and Josh Krieger. We aim to bring you not only the top 1% of what's going on with NFTs today, but what will stand the test of time. We explore the nuts and bolts and the business side, but also the human element of how NFTs are changing the way we interact with the things that we love. This podcast is for the futurists and dreamers, the disruptors and creators, the fans and connectors, and the makers and doers that are pumped about this ecosystem and driving where it goes next. Today's episode features Greg Norman Jr. and Michael Simpkins, the founders of Eleven, the world's most exciting non-fungible nightlife. Greg Norman Jr. has worked alongside his father, Greg Norman, in the Greg Norman Company, leading business development and investment strategy and operations. He founded Shark Wake Park in 2016 with two locations in South Carolina and Florida. He was the CEO of Jupiter Group in 2021, leading the team to $50 million in NFT sales and exited in December 2021. Since then, he has been the co-founder and CEO of Europa Labs. Now, Michael Simpkins, he's the CEO of Eleven Crypto. He went to Brooklyn Law School and is the president of the Lion Development Group. He is the owner of Eleven Partners, Eleven Residences, and Eleven Miami Ultra Club. He is also a board member of Endeavor Miami, Refresh Miami, and Miami Beach JCC. Fellows, welcome to Edge of NFT. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Good to be you here. You guys have done a great job with branding 11. Like whenever I go to Miami, there's like something cool going on at 11 in the NFT and crypto scene every single time um, I'm out there. And uh, yeah, excited to have you guys on the show. We'll have to get you over to LA and Chicago sometime too, where the, the rest of the world hangs out and maybe doesn't party quite as hard. Yeah, so uh, we spend time out there. We love it out there. 11 is, is going to be expanding, so you never know. Rock and roll. Amazing. I'm over here in Sarasota on the other side on the Gulf Coast, guys. So loving the, uh, the ongoing beautiful weather we got here. But like, guys, we want to start always at the beginning and, and, and get a little sense for the origin story here. So you got 11, you know, crushing it, you know, down in Miami. We have this idea of the world's most exciting, non-fungible nightlife. What's the origin story? What drew you to the world of NFTs and, and how do we get to where we are right now? Well, uh, my partners and I, um, Mark Roberts, Dennis DeGory, are big crypto enthusiasts, NFT collectors, and uh, personally, we've been doing it for some time. Uh, the nightclub, 11, was the first major club to start accepting Bitcoin uh, in the United States. And then we developed two hotel condominium properties across the street. And those were the first pre-development projects to accept crypto. We did a partnership with FTX. So any crypto on their platform, we accept. We've done over 70 deals with buyers utilizing crypto, uh, representing over $60 million of transactions. And actually three of those were bought with ApeCoin also. So we wow. were a indirect crypto participant uh, through these things as we saw NFTs uh, evolving from collectibles, um, PFP collections to more utility access membership, we said, wow, we could do something really special here with 11, you know, Friday, Saturday night, there's a two, three hour line. Um, so a membership there has a lot of utility, a lot of value. And we made a conscious decision to become direct participants in the NFT crypto space. Uh, start 11 Captains Club. And at that point, we knew we had to really bring in great Web3 partners. Uh, so we brought in Horizon Labs and Greg Norman Jr. and a bunch of other folks also. Isn't that great, man? Wow, that's so cool. You know, the, the idea of, of memberships and what it can be and become and how it can be traded and uh, managed over time 
it's just changed so drastically with the advent of NFTs. And uh, it's really just the beginning, right? Because NFTs are that first step to bridge to, to the future, really. It's not the last step. We know that, that's for sure. So really great use case. Absolutely. And, and I, I'm sure you guys are thinking about ApeCoin and, and what else to do with this uh, magical crypto money, right? I mean, who would have thought? And now at this point, like, you know, I wouldn't want to guess how many establishments will accept ApeCoin by the end of the year. I know I'm going to at the Lake Parks. It's too good. <laughs> Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if anyone will want to use it. It keeps going up so fast. It's like everyone will uh, will hold it. But uh, that merch I, is very expensive now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is indeed. Indeed, I'm 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 holding for sure. Not financial advice, but um, no, my favorite no. my favorite part about ApeCoin was talking to someone who didn't know about that much about NFTs. When I told them we we hosted NFT LA, I was like in a shop outside of LA in Topanga Canyon. And this woman said, yeah, I just got some crypto. And I was like, oh, what'd you get? Ethereum, Bitcoin. And she said, I got ApeCoin. And I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. And I said, um, how did you hear about that? And she said, Oprah. Uh, wow, <laughs> so I still haven't figured out where, where exactly Oprah's shilling ApeCoin, but I think that's just fascinating. <laughs> yeah, if that's not... If that's not mainstream adoption, I don't know what is. But speaking of which, um, you guys got this great mainstream um, club and you're doing all sorts of things to, to build bridges here. For our listeners, can you walk us through the details of what Eleven is? Sure. Eleven is an ultra club. So it uh, was founded in 2014 in downtown Miami. And it is typically open 24 hours a day. We kind of are still ramping back up after COVID. So we close about 10, 11 a.m. right now, uh, but typically it stays open. And it's really a, a sensory overload, a really um, fun location of watching. Could be Drake or Travis Scott, Post Malone. There's theatrics, Cirque du Soleil things going on. There's amazing lights. There's beautiful people. There's great food, including we have famous chicken tenders over there. Sounds That's a little bit like NFTLA, guys. I don't know. It's <laughs> cool. And uh, it, it's a special place. It's become the most profitable club in the world per square foot also. So it's a uh, highest grossing, I believe. Highest grossing club per square foot. Well, so I, I also don't know any other clubs that sell chicken tenders. So there has to be <laughs> something to to that combo right there it's a winning com com combination i don't know it's uh you put one and two you get three so one we talk equals three we talk about uh high high grossing clubs we talk about eight coin uh board a yacht club i don't know if that's considered a club and how much they're going to gross <laughs> and that leads me to asking you about captain's club there's some interesting overlaps and themes here so um can you tell me about the 11 captain's club and and what, what makes that unique? Sure. The uh, 11 Captain's Club is going to be 1,111 uh, unique NFTs. Each one uh, will have different rarity, uh, a combination between four to seven different traits. And uh, the utility is standard across the collection. There's really incredible in real life utility at the club and then in our ecosystem, we have a hotel that's being built right now, the condominium, we will have future clubs. So in real life there, and then web three utility also with private discord server and kind of this is gonna be an amazing group individuals that make up the community. And we're really excited to, to expand our community, listen, learn from the community, and try to you know be as authentic and uh, respectful to Web three uh, as we can. I'll let Greg add to that. Uh, so where I see the the advent of NFT technology going is these access tokens, these membership tokens. I think the the first foray of you know people doing a sixty nine million dollar sale with art and then art digital art and then PFP projects were the forefront of twenty twenty one. But then 2022, we'll be able to see the next iterations of the technology be able to expand out to businesses and where businesses are going to be able to take them. And it's very, very exciting doing this right now with Michael, with the 11 team, because this is at the forefront of this technology wave. And uh, you know, I, I was part of a founding member of LinkStyle 
which is the sale of the NFTs for the push and the eventual purchase of a golf course. But that's down the road. That's not happening right now. This is going to be happening right here immediately after the sale of the NFT. There's the world's greatest ultra club with the 11 vodka and 11 hotel and 11 ecosystem coming along with it. And I'm just really excited and honored to be part of this. I gotta then, expect, you know, I've seen the mayor doing his DJ thing, I guess, in Miami. I'm sure he's he's going to want to be a member of this club. I assume he's very crypto and NFT friendly. Yeah, I mean, there's really going to be a, an amazing group. I think it'll be a combination between celebrities, musicians, athletes. There will be Web3 uh, enthusiasts, uh, business titans, and uh, really a great mix of people that we could each uh enjoy being around and learn from each other. You know, um, I come from uh, Florida, South Florida. I spent a lot of time in Miami from the University of Miami at undergrad there. And to be able, and Michael has been there his entire life, but to see how Miami's grown so much and adopted and embraced crypto and Web3, it's, it's gonna be, it is already, in my opinion, the hub of this. It'd be, you know, have the political spectrum and the folks around there adopting it like it is it's it's incredibly enthused uh, the energy down there is amazing right now yeah it, and it really uh is continuing there's there's no let up in sight i think what we've really imported over the last year is human capital we've gotten amazing people that are not at the tail end of their career or retired but in the prime of their career looking to build businesses hire people you know, work hard, play hard, enjoy their life. I think that was a big lesson over the last few years is that people have to enjoy themselves also. And uh, there's not too many better places than Miami to work hard and play hard. So we're doing our piece at 11 uh, to, to help people obtain those goals and, uh, you know, we'll continue. But it is really exciting what's happening in Miami, led by great mayor, led by amazing stakeholders, and kind of, it's probably been like 10 years in the making of, you know, uh, encouraging technology companies to go there, uh, nonprofits, and, and all these things that have been in the works, and it was so great to see it kind of explode over the last couple of years. Yeah, man, I mean, piggybacking off of community, right, is at the centerpiece of so many of the projects that have been successful. Um, and so when we think about that, obviously, there's the people that the holders of the, uh, the NFT, the participants in it, um, those that uh, are on the other side of it as well. And you mentioned a lot of folks that are, are at the club. What kind of exclusive access will this NFT provide to its holders, either to those people or to particular experiences? Like what's on the roadmap for that particular piece of the NFT? So very shortly after Mint, uh, Eleven is doing a takeover of Resorts World in, in Las Vegas. So our first Eleven Captains Club official event is not going to be in Miami. It's going to be in Las Vegas at a pop-up event, exclusive access, party where there'll be amazing uh, talent, there'll be beautiful people, and uh, we're still figuring out the details. It'll probably be a super like exclusive area within a larger party that will be the Captains Club. But on a daily basis, once we get our technology um, set up and Greg's company, Europa Labs, is, is assisting with token gated access to get into the club and physical redeemable tokens that could be redeemed for um, either tickets, merchandise, vodka, um, are all coming. But it's not going to be day one. It will be shortly after uh, as we kind of get the technology rolled out over there. But I think those sort of things, exclusive parties, token gated access to get in, um, kind of this group and, and opportunities to uh, get together for this community in real life, opportunities to communicate on Discord for this group, and really community, our in real life community is really strong. We built two condo towers that sold out in record time for close to a billion dollars, like about 900 units almost, and, um, and sold out in a matter of months. And I think that people really resonate with the 11 brand. It's just a, a way of being. It's kind of living your best life. You know, uh, I won't judge you, don't judge me, and let's have a good time kind of vibes. 
Yeah, I, I was I was doing a little Googling because I love the number 11, but I'm like, why do I love this number? And, you know, apparently it has some deep roots in terms of being inspirational, artistic and spiritual. Is that some of what went into the DNA of the brand? I think that 11 is an extremely powerful number. So it's located on 11th Street in downtown Miami. But I think the reason why we carried that name forward is a lot of those reasons with the strong spiritual kind of connections. And it's actually more people's favorite number than any other number, according to some article I read one time. But uh, it is a powerful number. So we are uh, happy to, 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 you know, embrace it, uh, incorporate it, and, you know, 1111, make a wish. Yeah, yeah. Was was it a no-brainer to do the drop with, you know, 1111 NFTs or did you consider going 111111? Uh, I'm just or some other deviation? Yeah, it definitely wasn't a no-brainer and there was a lot of debate and conversation around the tokenomics, around uh, the number that we did. We we had at one time thought we'd do a larger collection in the 10,000 range but really figured out that for our community, for our first project, it really was better to have a smaller, tighter group that we can curate, you know, experiences better. We can um, deliver more value. And that's what we're hyper-focused is delivering value to our community. So now that we have arrived at 1111, it feels so right and we're so good, but it wasn't an easy uh, process to, to get there. Yeah. No, making those decisions is always tough. I mean, we were thinking about how big we wanted the first NFTLA would be, and we just want to deliver a quality experience. It sounds like that's what you guys are all about as well. How can our listeners join and participate in, in the club? What, what's the deets? Yeah, so I think, Josh, you're 100% right. We really want to deliver a quality experience. It's not this 11 Captains Club is not about us. It's about our community making sure everyone uh, gets the greatest experience they can. Um, so, you know, we welcome all your listeners to check out 11 Captains Club uh, on Twitter, join our Twitter. We have an allow list out there um, that can help them get uh, access to our NFT. You know, really excited. So I've been kind of wanting to ask this because clearly you're, you're a Miami like a Miami guy that knows like a ton of cool stuff about Miami. We like to treat our listeners well. Give us like some alpha about Miami. Like, is there any secret spots that you know about that uh, you don't share with that many people or things that people should do or check out in Miami that's little known and, and really awesome? I mean, there are so many amazing places in Miami and I love it. I'm born and raised here. I went to college in California, law school in um, New York, but then right back to Miami. So it's amazing. What I would say is I live on Miami Beach, but the city of Miami is so exciting right now. All the emergence of these different neighborhoods that are popping up. So I really enjoy a lot of the cultural destinations. So you know, Calle Ocho and Little Havana, you get this sense of the Cuban culture. You go to Overtown, you really get a sense of Black uh, Florida culture. And uh, you go to Arthur Godfrey on Miami Beach, you get a Jewish culture. So I think there's all these locations that are, you know, great entertainment spots, but there's these cultural destinations within Miami that sometimes get overlooked that are really cool also. Nice, yeah, I appreciate With all the that. culture comes the food amazing food down there oh yeah 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 all the all the latin american caribbean food Ooh, man okay so and then the water and and then to be on the water boating is the greatest in miami you know the intercoastal water skiing you know greg could tell you about the wakeboarding uh and whatnot down here in south florida but boating is world class here as well and my favorite was when we were from my uh -huh. favorite was when we were in miami at the at, at the decentral and uh I think it was, we went to this yacht, Josh and I showed up at a yacht and, the, and, and Josh's like, this yacht again? I've been to this yacht already. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know what's next on your guys' roadmap before we uh, end this segment with the next couple of questions. But yeah, what's next on your roadmap that you can share that you might not have said yet? Really what we're working hard on is partnerships, um, you know, working with other kind of Miami institutions, broadening our, our reach 
getting our community more access to some of these uh, other in-demand locations. So focus at the moment is uh, expanding partnerships, but we're working with Horizon Labs, the firm that uh, helped you go with their ApeCoin and the metaverse. So certainly there's a lot of other things being discussed. We have really exciting ideas, nothing concrete, but we, we are kind of ready to roll up our sleeves and work for the next 20 years on this and really do some amazing things. Cool. Sounds exciting. Yeah, that Enamoka Moran's team is something special. Uh, they're investors in uh, our company as well and uh, definitely big inspirations to us. So speaking of inspirations, like where else are you guys drawing inspiration for your ideas and the next steps in this amazing venture? I mean, I'll, I'll, we definitely are looking to a lot of the in real life success. Uh, Greg alluded to Link Dow, you know, a lot of stuff Gary V is doing with Fly Fish Club and, and he's kind of, uh, you know, really set set the high water mark and kind of been an inspiration uh kind of observing the way he's kind of navigating web three and just looking at really exciting communities and projects and just you know hyper focused on delivering value to our community yeah uh, to add to that without a doubt gary v with flyfish club you know really set the bar high uh we try to hit that link style but then uh, other companies and organizations like JPEG Morgan, what they're doing with Proof Collective, what they're doing, um, really these really tight knit communities, really focused on what the possibilities of NFTs are. And of course, Punk6529, what he's doing with the his OM metaverse and how it could be an open metaverse. Uh, these communities are really pioneering what's possible with NFTs and we're in thinking about every different use case possible out there and then playing around with those use cases with our legal teams to see what is possible how you navigate this because it's uncharted territory so every day we're all learning from each other iterating growing and evolving together and sharing ideas which from my previous life was everything was a walled garden here it's open communication across the board because we are so new there's this is we all are helping each other out to grow this entire industry right now Anything well, else uh, inspirational for you guys before we cut to the next section? Oh. I just, you know, uh, Miami, Miami's is inspiring by seeing the growth, by seeing kind of the cultural institutions, you know, in Web3, it's, uh, it, it's moving so fast. MoonPay is doing an amazing job. One of the first, uh, one of the biggest crypto companies, uh, you know, based in Miami, started a few years ago. Uh, they're do really inspiring in a lot of ways as well. Awesome. Well, I think we're about to hit our edge quick hitter segment. Uh, that should be really fun to get to know you guys a little better. Jeff, you want to uh, host that segment as you do? Yeah, sure. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give the intro actually, but I'll let you, uh, Ethan and Josh host it as I will have to roll off for a little bit. Ah, perfect. Um, so as a reminder, edge quick hitters, it's a fun and quick way to get to know you a little better. There's 10 questions. We're looking for short, single word or few word responses, but you know, feel free to uh, expand if you get the urge. You guys ready to, to dive in on this thing? Let's do it. All right. All right. First question, we'll start with Michael. What is the first thing you remember ever purchasing in your life? Hotcakes and sausage from McDonald's. Oh, nice. so healthy. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> Love them. Love well, them. Uh, clearly uh, you've changed your habits, um, or at least from an external perspective, it looks like you changed your habits yeah. since then. Yeah, yeah, bacon. Yeah. I sausage and bacon. Hey, bacon is, is 100% <laughs> keto. That's that's what I tell myself. Uh, Greg, what about you? I don't remember, so I'll give you another answer for NFTs. I purchased a space board ape, which is a derivative of a board ape. A month after they minted, I should have just bought the board ape. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Should have, could have. They, yeah. they, they, they plague us. All right. So, Greg, why don't you take this one? What is the first thing you remember ever selling in your life? And you can't say you don't remember. Uh, well, I can say that. I don't remember the first thing. Okay. So, um, let's see. Oh, I was my first job. I worked in retail and I remember selling my first shirt. Nice. nice. What was it was like it? a polo shirt or like a I wore, I, I t shirt? I worked in Hollister. <laughs> so, <laughs> nice. the uh, yellow card still plays in my head all the time <laughs> there you go and what about you michael uh i remember selling um 
gift wrapping paper that they used to give you in elementary school and send you out door to door and you would win like a, a prize if you were like one of the highest selling people. So uh, going door to door and so on. Did you, did, you crush, did you crush it? Were you, oh, were you top? Man. I was, I was amazing. I, $179 in sales. Woo. That, that's, <laughs> my, oh my. That is, that's a that's lot a small of, lot of, yeah, that's a lot of wrapping paper, but <laughs> you know, you, we learn a lot about um, the entrepreneurial blood and our, our, our guests with that question. It's a fun one. The things they have kids. So it's such a funny, funny time in life. Um, all right. Next question. I'll go back to you, Michael. And Ed is, what is the most recent thing that you purchased? The most recent thing that I purchased was, what did I, I'm trying to think what NFT I recently bought. I did recently buy a board Ape. So oh. I, I got a board Ape pretty recently. Congratulations. They, 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 they took a little dip. So that might not have been a bad, bad decision, especially with this land sale coming up. Cool. Yeah. yeah. And we'll accept that transfer you know, right after the show, if you want to transfer it over to us, we'll, we'll take care of it for you. Okay. Greg, uh, what about you? What's the most recent thing you purchased? Peanut butter banana smoothie about two hours ago. Oh, delicious. Oh, man, that's been my go. That's been my go-to lately. <laughs> well. All right. Back to Michael with what's the most recent thing you've sold? Uh, I sold the boat. I had a boat uh, that I had to sell and uh, it was a good boat, five years, but moving on. And it's amazing that boat prices with inflation, with so much demand, I got almost as much as I paid for it five Great. years later. That's wow. rare. That is like such a rarity in the world of, of boats, right? It's crazy. Yeah, it's crazy. It's boats an indication. Have, boats have fun names. What was the boat's name? Um, that one was called Triple Threat. I have Ooh. three kids. We, I was looking at them, so we gave them the Triple Threat. <laughs> nice. Greg, what's the most recent thing you sold? Recent thing I sold was my uh, guest room bed. My, my wife just sold it because she's remodeling the guest room. Mm, okay. Nice. Cool. All right. Let's go a little bit deeper, Greg. Uh, what is your most prized possession? Gotta say my most prized possessions, that ring right there was for my wife. I mean, our uh, we got married at the end of the last year and it's been amazing. Mazel tov. What about you, Michael? Probably my home. You know, we 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 bought it, and my wife uh, was really involved in in designing and building a new home. We fought all the time about it, but we made it through, and uh, you know, both really happy. You know, uh, raising our family here, so I'd say the home. Nice, Michael. If if you could buy anything in the world, digital, physical, service, or an experience that is currently for sale, what would it be? I mean, I recently had a horrible travel experience in terms of cancels. So I'm ready to get a plane. I don't know. We need some things to work out. I'm ready for a plane. All right. <laughs> hey, sweet. We actually have um, some guys that can help you out coming on the yeah. show in, in, in about uh, 10 days. So um, yeah. we, your wish is our command. What about awesome. you, Greg? I would buy a surf pool. I love to surf. And there's these amazing new artificial surf pools coming out. One of them coming in South Florida here soon, and uh, I'd be there way too much. Nice, nice, fascinating. And, and by the way, Michael, you can buy that plane as an NFT, so that's a little sneak sneak peek. So yeah, very cool, like, very cool. As, no, as if it learn. wasn't <clears throat> obvious because they're coming on our show, but wow. yeah, yeah, no, 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 I got to learn more. I'm interested. Give them, give them my number. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna ping it back to Greg here. This question is, if you could pass on one of your personality traits to the next generation, what would you like them to have? I would say being respectful to myself and to the people around me. I've learned from a very young age, from my father and from my mother, to always treat people with respect. I would take that on with my kids. Excellent. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Michael? I would say patience. You know, I have the ability to wait, have conviction that uh, certain things will come about and don't need instant gratification. You know, I do uh, uh, real estate development in addition to these hospitality and crypto now. Uh, so in developing projects take a long time, you know, mm. to, to go from a piece of land to a condominium tower or something is like a five-year process. Um, so pretty patient. 
Good things take time. Yeah, Je- Je- that's actually Jeff's background too. He he spent quite a few years in real estate development in DC. So um, I heard those stories and all the all the hoops you have to navigate through. It makes Web three seem easy. It, it uh, at times, but I'll tell you, building a community for an NFT project is no small feat either. Yeah. Whenever I'm doing something that's like hard and takes a long time like that, I just remind myself, oh, like. I'm pr- if I'm the only one that can tolerate this, <laughs> then I'm the only one that can achieve it. That's great. You know, everybody else is giving up right here. All right. So next question back to you, Michael, again, if you could eliminate one of your personality traits from the next generation, what would you hold back? You know, I just, I indulge, I probably indulge too much, uh, you know, <laughs> eating, uh, weekends, late nights, uh, McDonald's enjoy pancakes some, and yeah, McDonald's <laughs> pancakes. I like a good vice now and then. So, uh, a little bit too much indulgence. All right. Fair enough. Greg, how about you? If you could eliminate a personality trait from the next generation, what would it be? Somewhat on the same line as Michael, just, I get too obsessed about one thing and everything gets blocked out. So I learned how to have to learn over the years in order to focus that in order to you know, get anything really accomplished because you know, there's golf or surf, I'd be out there on the course or in the water every day. Right. But actually, I mean, these vices here for you guys is a little bit of extra marketing for the 11 brand. You know, yes. you want to indulge, you're dealing <laughs> with the right guys here. <laughs> <laughs> indulge is our middle name. <laughs> there you go. All right, Greg, what did you do just before joining us on the podcast? I literally signed a client today for our company, Europa Labs. So I'm very excited right now. Cool. Can, can, you, can you say anything about that at all? Sure. Yeah. Europa Labs is building NFT infrastructure for redeemable technology. And so we signed a group that is doing luxury jewelry. And it's a pre-sale will be done as the NFT. And folks will be able to redeem it for luxury jewelry. There you go. The whole, nice. the, the, the digital world. It's a really uh, amazing space. I met the, the crypto jeweler actually at the Wisdom uh, after party at NFTLA. And I was like such a, it was a fan moment. Like that guy does beautiful work. And I think there's so many cool things that could be done with custom jewelry and NFTs. So that's exciting. Congrats. Thank Michael, what about, what about you, Michael? I was over at uh, Jordan Belfort's house, the Wolf of Wall Street, right before right. this hanging out there with, with my partner, Mark, and, uh, you know, just drinking some coconut water and talking crypto and uh, hanging out. And I looked at my watch. I said, I got to go. We got a podcast, a very important podcast I got to get on. So I uh, went right from Jordan's uh, right into this. Well, thanks for only indulging in coconut water before the show. We appreciate yeah. that. Co- coconut water has a similar. <laughs> it's, we were talking about that. It's addictive. <laughs> and, and, and in a good way. Um, and what are you going to do after uh, next, after the podcast, Michael? Major Food Group is opening a new restaurant called Dirty French. They're the people who have brought mm. us Carbone, uh, Sedels, and some other fabulous restaurants. So I'm going to the opening of their new restaurant in the Brickell area. That, that sounds fun. I'm Josh and I will hop on a flight and we'll join you. I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a food guy. I had to just sort of swallow a little bit of FOMO right there. Uh, what, are, what, are, what about you, Greg? I'm going over to my father's house for dinner and a beer. He just got back from London where they're executing on the first live golf tournament. And I don't know if you all know about live, but that's a a new golf tour, global golf tour. He's launching as CEO and commissioner. So I get to get caught up with him about the tour and about life and hopefully convince him to uh, bring on Web3 to live golf. Nice. All right. Stack stack that uh, dinner full of Greg Normans, yeah? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) There's some wine. Greg Norman wine. There you go. Well, I think we should do at least one hot topic. One hot topic. Yeah. Yeah. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, I think we're talking about golf. Do we have like anything fitness related we could talk about? As as it stands, we do. First hot topic, fitness metaverse. This tech company trades sweat for crypto and NFTs. Move to earn is a game changer. Keith, Keith Roomjohn, the 37-year-old founder and CEO, said in a video interview, he's the founder and CEO of OliveX, For the first time ever, players have true digital ownership of their games and game developers also earn more because there's no 
middleman. So it's win to win. Uh, the strategy enables it to tap into the three booming industries by combining physical fitness, mobile video games that incorporate blockchain technology. Yeah. I mean, I feel maybe even we were talking about on the podcast, it all blurs together, but somebody was asking me the other day, you know, how, how do you incorporate? Oh, actually it was my, my former personal trainer. He's like, ah, oh, what are some interesting ways to incorporate blockchain and fitness, you know, and th this is one of them, right? Yeah. This is super cool. Look, people have been trying to incorporate blockchain and fitness, but I think, you know, NFTs in the metaverse make it a lot more interesting, exciting, engaging, which is like what people need to sort of be motivated, right? Um, we've seen just the last few weeks step in and, and how incredible that project has been doing. And, you know, I'm sure, Greg, this has been something you've been thinking about too, but this feels like a fantastic use case and I'm excited for this team. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, what's going on with uh, Step In and this other company? It's just more iterations of the consumerization of crypto and NFTs. And I think we're getting to a world now where we're going to have proper use cases of crypto and what it could do in the real life, where folks could actually start wrapping their heads around rather than you know DeFi and yielding and farming, which is so foreign to the majority of masses out there. This is now. This, this is something that's going to bring, bring mass adoption, in my opinion. Now, this, yeah. this, this sounds amazing. And there's a lot of people that need to be motivated with fitness. For example, my 13-year-old son, I have to pay to do stuff. Now, with this new play to sweat, I don't have to pay him. He can earn his own <laughs> crypto by working on So I love this company. I gotta, we got to get him on we got to get them going soon. Log them in. I'll get them a uh, NFT on that project. Awesome. But look, look what's happening right now with it. You have the entire market crashing, and the two that are really going crazy right now is stepping in Ape Coin, which it has you know that the community focus around it. And I think that's going to be, as I said before, what we're going to see with crypto. It, it's there's no other way around it. Community based, in real life based, operational cash flow based businesses are gonna adopt this and it's gonna transform the industry. Absolutely, and I think the the ability to have it on the blockchain, to have the, that record keeping, all the things that sort of is sort of difficult with, with pre-existing technology or you know tying it into dates and times, it's all there for you, right? These are, these are really exciting use cases that make a lot of sense. People have intrinsic and extrinsic motivations for the things that they do in life. And this type of technology plays to both dimensions. Yeah, quick note, the, the company's longer term aim is to build an ecosystem of fitness games integrated with Animoca Brands Metaverse title, The Sandbox, a virtual world where players can build, buy, and sell their in-game assets that they interact with users and brands. So um, really like the, the movement to like, not just metaverse kind of like put on a headset kind of stuff, but AR in these places where, yeah, there's activity also that happens and there's integrations with, with the real world and, and uh, getting out and getting moving. Should we do one more Josh or should we call it? Yeah, let's, let, let's hit it. Let's, let's do one quick, more quick, yeah. quick hot topic. Okay. Minecraft developers confront gaming giants, NFT love affair. There's a dispute over crypto in games and it highlights a stark internal divide. Staff uh, were rejecting a studio's Web3 push over ethical and climate risks. Totally fair. I mean, part of the reason we're doing our Living Tree NFT project is to highlight um, you know, the detriment that's, that's happening to the planet. We, we want to plant trees. We want to offset carbon. And I was just hearing about wildfires in California today on the radio and the problems that are going on there. Um, so certainly it's, it's very clear and, and honest criticism. The thing that I see, though, primarily with people in Web3, at least that I come across, also deeply people that care about the planet, they just you know think that Web3 has uh, more benefits than, than negatives and that there's ways to integrate. What are your guys' thoughts, uh, Greg, Michael? Um, do you, how do you confront this stuff? You know, do you, do you find that you have to on a daily basis? You know, what, what do you think? Uh, so if I could take that real quick, Michael, I was at over on the weekend at a wedding and I got to sit down and talk with an individual that owns a coal mine and they're actually starting to mine Bitcoin from the excess energy they're producing. And that's offsetting their carbon footprint and producing cash flow for them. 
So I think it's going to come down to the free market decision, viable, economically viable for, for production of clean energy, because he can now make money on Bitcoin mining from it. So I think it's going to be an advent of good rather than the push of bad that there are a lot of fun out there is currently on. Yeah. yeah, we've been thinking about it for a long time because as uh, real estate investors and developers and having Miami on a great trajectory, my only really con real concern is rising water and mm -hmm. its impact because Miami is built on lime rock and it goes through. So you can't just build a seawall. It will come up through there. So I think a lot about that. And I think that, you know, there's a, a, a lot of little changes uh, could have dramatic impacts. I'm really encouraged by seeing a lot of the projects um, incorporate more eco ways of, of mining and, and kind of uh, net zero uh, in Web3 and crypto. So there's trade-offs in life always, but uh, when we could, you know, do things in a more eco way, even if it costs a little more, I think it's our responsibility to do it. Yeah. My thing is I've never seen an industry more committed to disruptive innovation and, you know, solving problems. What's happened in this industry for the last year feels like it could have taken a decade to do what's been done when you really think about it and stack it up together. So I'm pretty bullish that these are challenges, these are stats that the industry is looking at smack in the face and figuring out what can we do to solve this, right? We had uh, Jack O'Halloran from Scale, an incredible um, layer one solution that is very sort of environmentally friendly. You got what Tezos is doing there. From a play to earn economy, I think there's been a shift to play and earn um, to create longstanding value in a community and to relate it to the physical world, like the previous um, discussion that we were having about the metaverse project. So, you know, I appreciate where these folks are coming at, like, let's use 2022 to prove it. And let's like, look at these stats again in a year, because I think they'll be quite different. Yeah, who knows, maybe we could have a, a clean to earn protocol that comes out, mm -hmm. yet earn a yield from picking up or cleaning up or planting trees, who knows? There's gonna be plenty of entrepreneurs out there are gonna chase after it because the incentivization's behind it. All right, so I just so, had a call yesterday with someone that's working on that. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> and actually I'm just realizing this is a, appropriate uh, for our, in place of our typical fan listener shout out, um, I'm gonna give a shout out to uh, Carbon Fund. Uh, the Carbon Fund Foundation is actually our partner in offsetting carbon uh, for both the Living Tree NFT project and the Spirit Seeds project. And we just had a, an accounting meeting. We're about to send them a nicely sized check um, to offset 2,400 metric tons of carbon off the offsets. That's approximately the amount to offset the one year of consumption for 100 individuals. So I'm really excited about that and really happy to be uh, partnering with them. I just got off the phone with Jared Emmert this morning over there, and he's been such a, a really great connect to have. So um, without further ado, though, uh, let's close out this episode. Make sure we get in here where uh, listeners can go to learn more about you guys and the projects you're working on. Can you give us some web links or socials to follow? Yeah, so for 11 Captains Club, uh, visit our website, visit our Twitter. We, our, our Twitter is uh, 11 Captains Club. And, uh, you know, uh, Come on in and go follow Michael on Twitter. He's got him. He's an amazing guy to follow. We need to pump up his follower count though. <laughs> I, I recently right, joined Twitter. I'm, I'm growing my uh, followers. But... All right. All right. Mike, Michael is part of our contest. We're definitely going to make following you. Um, there we go. You know, <laughs> Beautiful. Part of the thing. But what's your Twitter handle again, Michael? It's Miami Mikey 11 uh, <laughs> at Miami Mikey 11. There you okay, go. that's not so bad. As if you have a cool PFP, I'm gonna follow you. It's it's a my board ape with the eleven hat on him. Beautiful. All right, we got a giveaway too. Let's let's tell the listeners a little bit about that uh, before we wrap up. Yeah, so we've got five eleven crypto VIP boxes, which is pretty sweet. What 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 are those boxes, guys? Okay, so inside the box, you have a bottle of 11 vodka, which is the fastest growing vodka in Florida and Southern Glaciers, the biggest distributor, 1,500 accounts. It's going national this year. 
Kentucky is the next state. California is coming up shortly after that. Really exciting uh, brand that we have. So you get your bottle of 11 vodka, you get a money gun, you get real cash in there and you get 11 crypto hat. All right. That's, that's pretty fun. You know, our, our contests are always interesting. This one definitely stands out. So thanks so much, guys. You actually are going to get a physical redeemable token from Greg Norman, that company Europa Labs that could be burned for the box. That's right. So when we get the winners, we'll get their ETH addresses. Those ETH addresses will get airdrop the token. Then it's up to the user's discretion, whether hold it, hodl it, trade it, or burn it to get the box. Very cool. Well, thank you guys for a very Web3 contest. We appreciate that. And we have reached the outer limit at the edge of NFTs for today. Thanks for exploring with us. We've got some more adventures on the Starship. So invite your friends and recruit some cool strangers that will make this journey all so much better. How? Go to Spotify or iTunes right now. Rate us and say something awesome. Then go to edgeofnft.com to dive further down the rabbit hole. You can also check us out on Discord at edgeofnft.com slash Discord and uh, learn a little bit more about our community there. Lastly, be sure to tune in next time for more great NFT content. Thanks for sharing this time with us today. The views and opinions expressed on the Edge of NFT podcast reflect solely those views and opinions of the show creators and its guests. We are learning as we go just like you. Please make sure to do your own research. Our podcast is not financial advice. There are multiple strategies and not all strategies fit all people. You understand that you are using any and all information available on or through this podcast at your own risk.